Good evening and welcome to the Thursday, May 16th regular meeting of the school committee. We have just returned from an executive session where we met to comply with an act under the authority of Mass General Laws specific to the conducting strategy ses sessions in preparation for negotiations with non-unit personnel, the administrative team, because having the discussion in an open meeting would have a detrimental effect on the school committee's bargaining p position, and we are now reconvening an open session. And I would ask those who are here who would like to join us in the Pledge of Allegiance to please rise. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. So this is great to have so many people here in the audience. We have a number of recognitions. Uh, I, we want to start with recognitions and then we can double back to public comment after. We surely do. Uh, so I'm actually going to ask um, our Marathon Elementary School principal, Lauren Debeau, to come up. Uh, we have some folks from Lauren's building here tonight. We have students. We have some of the seniors from the Senior Center. And we have a very special retiree who has had a very special program going on for a long time. And we want to recognize that tonight. Mr. B, I'm going to have you over here. Okay, Izzy will stand, okay, because I'm going to let these ladies sit. Okay. All right, you right in there. And then ladies, you can sit. Sure, you have a seat. I want to sit here. That's it. Yeah, you may sit. No, I'm, I'm flexible. <laughs> we, flexible. We can stand. So we have a very special honoring tonight. Mr. Mark Bovere is retiring this year after 33 years of teaching. In Hawkington. In Hawkington. Now, he has taught almost every elementary grade, which is quite amazing. And also amazing is his first year of teaching, he had Izzy's uncle. His last year of teaching, he has a relative in his class. So what a way to come full circle. Now, when Mr. B started teaching, I did a little research, 1986, what happened in that year? Lots Were you of born things. Then? I was born. <laughs> I was. <laughs> now, um, Top Gun was a popular movie. They're making a remake right now. Uh, Magnum PI was popular. There's mm -hmm. another show out now. It's a reboot. So things are coming around again. Things that were popular then. So short shorts are coming back. Short shorts, maybe. But what we would like is a gallon of gas. A gallon of gas in 1986. Mm -hmm. 89 cents. Mm -hmm. So that, that one we do hope comes back. <laughs> but something else that's extra special about Mr. B is a writing program that he has with the Senior Center. I think it's almost 30 years mm -hmm. that he has been having his first graders write. They have code names. Her name is, do you want to say your name? Hermione. Hermione. She'll meet her pen pal later this month. We do a special luncheon. In years past, the class would walk to the Senior Center be introduced to their pen pals, learn their real names and a little bit about each other. But what a fabulous connection to have our seniors in town writing to these first graders with their um, you know, names over the years. Mr. B said we had a lot of Star Wars names. Mm -hmm. And this year, they will be joining us at Marathon for luncheon in a few weeks to meet their pen pals. And I know Mr. B invited me my first year in Hawkington to go to this special um, luncheon. And I was so thrilled. It was such a wonderful experience that when I left, he let me lead the class. And he said, Mrs. Dubow, you're headed to Upton. Turn the other way as we started walking back. So I now know all those back streets very well. So I don't know if you'd like to say a few words about your experience from the senior center side of the project. Uh, well, we've been doing it together about eight years. We took it over from a lady, Pat Wade, who did it a number of years. And I've probably been in it 15 years. Um, it's just been a joy. And the elders enjoy getting the letters and can hardly wait to open them, you know. And when they come in the fall, they're hard to read. But by <laughs> spring and summer, they're really... Aww. Well written. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's fun to see them, the growth it, it, that they make. Yeah, it, it, yeah. I was, uh, in, I had fifth graders when I first started, and uh, of course we could write the letter. Well, then when 
first grade came along, we were writing our letters, and the child said to me, I can't read cursive. <laughs> <laughs> so that was fun. We've just had some really enjoyable times along the way, especially the pen pal luncheon when we have pizza. Mm -hmm. uh, and they come with their little songs, and it's just yeah. precious. Everybody loves falling to it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think it's been a good thing for the children to learn to write letters and correspond, other than through all the techni technical stuff we have. So it's it's a good thing. Izzy, do you want to say anything We've about your experience? It. I love doing pen pals, and I love drawing beautiful pictures, and I, and I love... Um, when I get my note, I can't wait to open it. <laughs> so just honoring Mr. Bovair for all of his work, because this is above and beyond. Um, he has done this, and he is the teacher at our school. It was Center, now it's Marathon, who continues to write year after year. So we will be looking for another teacher to fill his shoes. They'll be difficult to fill, but we look for this program to continue. But the fact that you have it's done this wonderful. for almost 30 years, mm -hmm. that's remarkable. It's been the best thing that I've done, mm -hmm. I yeah. feel. Mm -hmm. Connecting the generations yeah. in town. That's good. That's nice. I, I had one. She's a junior in college, just finishing uh, first grade, and she was so tickled. Her mother had walked over with them. And then a few years later, um, the mother called me, and she said, oh, Anna got Mr. B. And she was so excited. I said, <laughs> OK, I'll have Anna. <laughs> Wonderful. So thank you for providing this opportunity to recognize him. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. thank you so much. Very nice of all of you to do that. Thank, thank you, Mr. Thank B, you. for Thanks. connecting you. the kids to the community. Yeah. Yeah. It's been easy. <laughs> <laughs> easy and fun. Right, Izzy? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank a wonderful well. retirement. Thanks. Yes. Mm. Okay, we'll go take some pictures. Thank you so much all for coming. Okay, and we have a second recognition in our audience tonight. Um, interestingly, we have brothers. We have um, Owen and Evan here tonight. Uh, I'll just read a little bit about uh, what it is that they have done. They have both won Library of Congress letters about literature essays. Um, Evan won the level one category for fourth to sixth grade, receiving top honors, and he has uh, actually advanced to the nationals. He'll read his letter at the State House on May 23rd and meet with Representative Dykema and Senator Spilker. Um, they will tell you a little bit about their essays, so I won't steal anyone's thunder. In the level two category, grades seven to nine, Owen won honors as one of the top four eighth graders in the state. In the entire history of the Library of Congress essay contest, approximately 28 years. Uh, Owen is the first student to win his state twice and now place in his state three times. Um, so he's also going to be honored at the State House on the 23rd of May. Uh, Owen is um, a recipient of another writing award. He's third in the nation in the National PTA Reflections Art and Literature Competition. There are 5,000 PTAs in the country that send in a single student essay and um, our Hopkinton Owen is third. So that's pretty amazing. Um, so I would ask you both to come up, please. All right, so I'm going to start with Evan, if that's OK. okay. Um, Evan, the, the book that he chose to write about was Exclamation Mark. And um, in his book, he references a teacher who had a profound impact on him, and that is Mrs. Leslie Pryor, who is also here tonight. So I'm going to ask Mrs. Pryor to join Evan. Thank <laughs> you. 
for you. You thought standing was going to be enough, huh? No, <laughs> you have to come up. Not unlike Mr. Um, Boisvert, uh, Mrs. Pryor is also retiring this year. So this is such a lovely honor, I think. And so, Evan, if you could talk a little bit about um, how Mrs. Pryor inspired your writing. Well, out of every teacher that I've had, I've, there's always been those moments that are like, don't do that, don't do this, uh, you can't do that. Well, Mrs. Pryor is more like, you can, you, you can do that, but think about it, like, <laughs> uh. <laughs> Could you still be funny? Probably not. But uh -uh. with me? Could you be funny? I think your humor came out. Uh. So how long were you in Mrs. Pryor's class before you realized that she was kind of different? Probably on like halfway through the year-ish, probably. Yeah. Uh, and did you enjoy writing? Oh, definitely, yeah. It's like art, but with words, I guess. And that's yeah, a great way to put it. So when did you start writing? Uh, probably back in like first grade, no, it was like, Owen run, won this big essay contest, I remember. Six, and, you were in, it was like fourth grade, right? And I'm like, hey, maybe I can do that, and <laughs> I did, and well. <laughs> it's like fourth or fifth, right? Yeah. yeah. Wait, wait, wait. But even before because that, was you were writing. Grade, yeah, yeah, I was, he writing, wrote, with, he wrote I was writing with you in class and stuff, and you helped me became that level of stuff I am now, so thanks. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. He always had it. He had the words. He had um, the way to put um, ideas together, and he had injected all kinds of personal touches. I can even remember those um, um, writing prompts that we had to do. I still oh, use yeah. it. I know. I didn't like them either. <laughs> <laughs> See what you can say when you're going to retire? <laughs> <laughs> I used his as a model because. Oh, did you? Do you remember? I did. Yes. <laughs> would you rather be on? Uh, would you rather go to a farmhouse or a fire department or the fire department? Do you remember that one? Well, <gasps> oh yeah. So cool. And he. Which had, one did you pick, though? This is important. I'm pretty sure I picked fire department. Okay. <laughs> mm -hmm. He liked the bells and the pole and. Mainly gets the pole. <laughs> this is true, it's but the part. Um, his way of putting things together and also what we picked was so apt for him. And I think that gave him, um, he's found his voice. And I think that's great. So I use it as an example for the other teachers. And I say, well, you know, you can do it at age eight. And yeah, so you know, we kind of put you out there. I don't think I ever told you that. <laughs> right. So yes, for sure. So he's had it. He just had to figure out how to get it on paper and make it really Well, I think you figured that out, haven't you? Yes, he has. Yeah. So, no, no. let's hear a little bit from Owen. Is that okay? That's totally fine. So, the book that Ed Owen chose to write about was um, Essie Hinton's uh, That Was Then, This Is Now. So, do you want to talk a little bit about uh, your writing process? Or? Well, yeah, my writing process. Um, whenever I'm writing an essay or just anything in general, I usually just well, first I read the book, and then I just, well, my mom calls it throwing up on the paper. I just <laughs> just write anything that comes to my mind. I just, anything. And then I, later, I just edit and see, and tries to make what fits, and it sort of, it sort of just forms on its own. I, it's like midway through the process, I just get an idea of what I'm doing. It just happens as I'm writing it. The two of you are amazingly accomplished writers, and I would imagine we'll see more great things. I mean, this is the third year I think you've been here to the school yeah. committee. That it's it's yeah. become a nice <laughs> regular thing. I, I think Stop. we'll be looking it's forward to next year now too, right? Yeah, That's I, why I you guess look so comfortable. You're just used to this. Yeah, I'm not. You've never. <laughs> 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 
we actually keep a scrolling calendar, so we'll just put Owen Fitzpatrick in for next year. <laughs> we'll expect just to put see a back. line down. <laughs> you are both amazingly talented writers in your own right, but when you look at the fact that you're middle schoolers, that's even bigger. It's You write better than most adults that I know, and that's a real tribute to where you where you are right now but where you're going thank you and it Very, is oh, yeah. an extreme pleasure to watch that process for you year after year and to now see your brother here this is tremendous to have two writers in one family your parents must be over the moon proud of you <laughs> thank you well so, so much they should be they write with heart and that's, that's what i thought was so interesting it's not just a crafted um, you know, formulaic kind of um, piece. Right. They put their um, heart and soul and they can put their personality in it. And that writers practice for years to, to do that. And both of you were able to put your heart on paper. And to find your voice like that. Yeah, commendable. Congratulations on your Congratulations. achievement. Thank you. And so we much. hope to see you next year too. Yes. Then you'll be more comfortable. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> also, I just want to thank you for bringing Mrs. Pryor in. Uh, it's thank you. wonderful. Yes, it's really nice to see teachers that have had an impact and to come back um, to, to be able to celebrate that here. So, and thank sure. you very much for coming. I could also thank add, you. I believe I was at a faculty meeting as a guest one day. And is that when you shared a little bit of this writing? I think so, yes. And um, so, Mrs. Pryor was so impressed with what you had written that she wanted to share a little bit of it out with the Elmwood faculty. And um, I think that just goes to show how fondly she thought of you and that when you leave a teacher's classroom, you still have that impact on your teachers even a number of years later. So she had expressed to the entire Elmwood faculty how proud she was of you and how impressed she was um, with the work that you had done and accomplished. So you are definitely well remembered at the Elmwood School. So congratulations. Thank you. Fame. Yes. Congratulations mm -hmm. to both of you. Finally famous. Well Thank you so much. <laughs> congratulations to Mrs. Brothers. Pryor too. We'll miss I you. Know. Thank you. Mm -hmm. It's interesting hearing it. <laughs> Good luck at the State House on the 23rd. Oh, yes. Yeah, it's going to be great. Sure. Enjoy it. That's exciting. It's fun. It is. Thank you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. when we have recognitions like this. I know. It could it's feel good, right? Yeah. So at this point, uh, we have an opportunity for public comment. If there are people who would like to come up and make a comment, um, this would be the time to do so. <laughs> Sadly, think we are. Yeah. They're all here to do um, for recogni oh, do we, recognizing each what? other. What? Oh, we have a student students. council of kids, but no. Okay. So if there is no one here for um, public comment, then we would move into we have a student council uh, report. How's it going? Good, how are you? Good, thanks. You want to just introduce yourself just so that people watching at home can? I'm a sophomore, Brian Keefe. I'm Luke McDonald, I'm a junior. Uh, I'm Steve Matthew, I'm also a junior. You want to start, Brian? So, um, this past month at HHS has been a hectic week of testing. <laughs> um, last month, the sophomores had the English MCAS, uh, which went really smoothly. This week is AP testing, uh, which also went really smoothly. Um, next week we have the math MCAS, and then early June we have the biology MCAS. So uh, last Friday we had um, prom in Foxborough at the Lakeview Pavilion, uh, our pavilion, um, excuse me, and that went very smoothly. Everyone was very safe and had a great time. And um, thank you to the parents who put on an awesome after prom. That was uh, a lot of fun as well. Um, our sports, spring sports, have been going awesome as well. Our baseball team is in contention to um, win the league, and we're members of the lacrosse team. Sorry, we came just after practice. Um, so the sports are going great, and the art show is going on right now, as uh, you all probably saw walking in. Uh, we only have a couple few uh, events coming up. Um, this Monday is going to be the senior project presentation. So for the last month or so, uh, the seniors have been um, coming up with different projects. Each senior 
uh, they can have a partner or work by themselves. Uh, they meet with a teacher uh, who like signs off their ideas. Uh, so some people are like making their own music. Uh, some are fishing. So they're gonna come uh, with their presentation. So we're all looking forward to that. Uh, a lot of times the teachers will let us go see it a little bit. So that's, that's fun. Is it an assembly or is it in a classroom? Um, it takes place in the gym. So just like a lot of times during our elective or during lunch, uh, we'll be able to walk down and we'll be able to hear hear what some of the seniors did. So that's that's gonna be pretty cool. Um, starting early June is gonna be elections. So for student council and uh, principal. Uh, so not principal, um, president and vice president, uh, they're going to give their speeches, so we're all looking forward to that. Um, a little nervous, but ho hopefully we get elected again. So are you all running again? Yeah. Yep. Nice. Um, and then student council is going to put on the Hiller Fest again, so that's something we do every year. It's like a cookout um, outside on, on the backfield. Uh, all the clubs come, and they each have like their own little board. You play games, there's cornhole, there's... Uh, volleyball, so it's always a great time, kind of wind down the school year, end the school year, wrap it up. So it's really fun. So we'll be putting that on early June, and um, that's that's pretty much all we have for today. So thank you very much for having us. That's great. Thank, thank you. you. For thank you. And then it's over. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Was this year the first time you did the MCAS on the computer? Yes. How'd that go? Uh, it went pretty smoothly. Yeah. Uh, they the school has set up like their own separate like Wi-Fi uh, so that everything could run smoothly so we didn't have to interfere with any of the other classes running uh, while we took the test so it went really well yeah that's great great and then you're you'll be done with MCAS yeah that's great mm -hmm. yeah exactly well good luck with the election great. and all your speeches yeah. and stuff yeah. thank you and awesome. and lacrosse yeah. and everything else and lacrosse yep yeah. yep busy thank you thank you very thank much, you very much. Yes. Bye -bye. you too that moves us then into the F-1 visa program update, and we have Mr. Hanna here to talk about that. Good evening. Thank you for welcoming me tonight. It was nice to see Mr. Bovere, uh honored earlier. He was a teacher at Elmwood, um, I believe, in fifth grade when I was there back in the 80s with Mrs. Porter I had and Mr. Beauvais was the new younger teacher and now <laughs> some 25, 30 some odd years later he's now moving on so obviously he's been a great addition to the Hopkinton community that's really good stuff. Um, I put a picture on Facebook earlier this week of my mom and I and my first grade teacher Stacia Cakely actually commented on it saying what a wonderful picture of you and your mom she was so kind to me as I was a young teacher and they then had a conversation underneath the picture uh, talking about you know the um, relationship that exists between elementary school teachers and parents and the, you know the the high care level the parents have for their children their safety and their growth and, and then the responsibility of the teachers and it was just funny to see those two go back and forth a bit about their relationship but it's so evident here uh, with the first two presentations I just thought I'd share those thoughts um, but again thanks for inviting uh, me this evening I hope I can go through a, a slideshow and bring you up to speed with where our international uh, program is and, and answer any questions you have um, so I, I put a quote there I've always been somewhat of a Dave Matthews uh, band fan I, I enjoy the the music that he writes and, and the horns especially but he also has some interesting perspective on life and, and in this quote I do feel like uh, one, one area our world can improve upon is moving away from an us versus them uh, mentality uh, and instead look at us as we and what can we learn from one another. And I think that uh, the international program uh, does that at a very local level. Uh, we bring friends from all over the world and spend um, you know, five or ten months together learning and living with and, and exchanging ideas and culture and um, celebrations. And, and to me, if we do that consistently at a young age, then as people grow older, they'll be resistant to an us against them attitude as adults because they can recall as sophomores, juniors, seniors in high school making friends from faraway lands that don't meet the statement that maybe was just made. Um, and as a former history teacher and a, a student of the world, so to speak, as our globe continues to become more crowded, I think it's critical that we uh, work to be more kind and understanding of one another. And I really feel like this program uh, captures that, uh, that essence. So we can move to the next slide. Um, maybe I can. I'm not sure why it's not moving. It's been up there for a bit. Maybe it's frozen. Yeah, huh? I think it might be. So, um, oop. Ooh, 
It's really going now. We'll go back. <laughs> Here we are. Yeah. Uh, so that, that the picture on the upper left is a, uh, a kind of on a bulletin board as you walk into the school and you can see where our cohort came from this year. So we use the map to show the students in the community from all the different spots. And as you can see, Brazil and China, Vietnam and Thailand, Germany, Italy, Japan, Poland, Spain, and Switzerland were all countries where students of ours came from this past school year. Um, over to the right, is the, that's the group of students that was at our orientation in August. They had only been here in the United States for a few days, and we welcomed them here to the school and brought them up to speed with their guidance counselor and their schedule and our building. And we have a wonderful ambassador program run by one of our world language teachers, Ms. Tice. Uh, so she had already trained and recruited uh, dozens of Hopkinton High students who were interested in making uh, strong connections with their international friends early on in that first day. And so um, that's that's the group and that was our, our first day there underneath are examples of companies that we have worked with and worked with this year and i put those up because i think it's important to understand that as a program our main objective is to create as diverse a cohort as possible uh, frankly if we wanted to we could easily get the 15 or 20 some odd students from either china or italy because those two countries stand out as having the most interest in international travel uh, and student participation, but what we really work with these agencies to try to create as diverse a group as possible. And although most of these countries are westernized-ish, um, we're working with uh, certain groups and, and aspects of their companies to try to see are, are there other lands that we can uh, make connections with and bring students in from, because to the point earlier, that's where I think the, the work will have long-lasting uh, impact. So that's kind of where we are this year. That's where our friends came from. That's who we work with. And there, there's the <coughs> pictures. We can go on to the next slide. Um, and over the course of the um, year, we have a number of different events, as is listed on the left there, international student orientation, and we have a pizza party that transitions to a home football game, and international night. And I'll, I'll ask if, if Dr. Kavanaugh could uh, click on the video. I don't know if the audio is set up for that or not, but this was on international night, a performance that occurred, which I just, it's only about 20 seconds, but I feel like it's worth hearing if we can get it timed up. And uh, that was a moment in, in, during the evening where, you know, the, the, the combination of the violin and her voice was so powerful that it, it silenced what was a kind of a loud crowd, a festive crowd were eating and exchanging stories and so on. And I just remember having a feeling while she was singing, so I was able to capture a bit of it on video. But as you can see, it was well attended. Up to the upper right, we, we decorated the cafeteria and worked with our food services director to be able to heat up food and, and really have a nice exchange. We've transitioned that night from a presentation-based evening to much more of kind of like a, a fluid social engagement, and we have great participation from our students and staff. And so that's really a nice way to kick off the uh, year. That's in October. And as you can see on the bottom, that's, a, that's from a, a, one of the host family's homes. That's a picture of a friend's giving that they had. Uh, bringing all of the ambassadors and international students together to kind of celebrate a uh, American holiday and Thanksgiving, but in a manner that you know talks about friendship. And so, uh, there's a couple quotes on the bottom. Uh, these are from students. We'd asked them to respond to a brief survey, asking like, "What about? Could you give us some feedback on your experience?" And as you can see, uh, those are two. But I would say um, one thing that Mr. Longoria, who co uh, organizes this program with myself. Uh, we've looked at in terms of survey feedback from our students is how can we create a more genuine friendship earlier on in the year? And so the ambassadors program has allowed for us, I think, to give our students and our friends a more uh, of a genuine and a more friendly experience than just getting the academic transcript from a school like Hopkinton. Uh, uh, although, you know, I was saying earlier to Ms. Rothenvich uh, about Hopkinton being a 
And in the country of Italy, according to a representative from CIE this morning, as I was working with her on some I-20 documentation, stands out as the number two most popular high school in the entire country to come to. So Italy knows about Hopkinton, Mass, which is pretty cool. And the students uh, from those places really want to come and be a part of our experience. Thanks. the question, what's number one? Uh, well, it was it was a school. I was a high school in Southern California, right on the beach. That's so I mean, I'm okay. like, all right. I mean, <laughs> I guess I can understand that. Um, Fair enough. Yeah, exactly. Um, Santa and I'll Monica. Think of us as number one. Yeah. <laughs> but so, um, in terms of the next slide. So um, giving you an idea on tuition, where we stand in terms of per pupil expenditure, uh, for this upcoming school year, we will be, um, th those are the figures, $8,015 for a student who would like to go for only one semester, and $16,030 for a student who will be attending for the uh, full year. And just for your information regarding like the um, fluidity of our program, with an increase in students at the high school and a premium on space uh, and teacher-student ratio, we made a decision to um, turn down the size of our cohort coming in for this next school year to 15 uh, F1 students and one J1 student. And we feel like we, we increased the number, of, I think, three years ago to try to uh, create a foundation of um, uh, capital to allow for our ambassador program to really thrive and we've done that and I think we're in a good position financially to continue that work um, as in relation to the experience both for Hopkinton and our international students but we felt as though maybe uh, putting the number at 15 would be a bit more reasonable when it came to our uh, student teacher ratio so um, one of the questions that has come up in the past is how does this impact our L services uh, for students that English is not their first language. And um, I know that I've worked closely with Andy Longoria to make sure that our cohort coming in is scoring a bit higher on some of the TOEFL tests that we use to uh, pick candidates, just so as to assure that our resources aren't being uh, stressed on uh, friends that we're bringing in. You know, it's a balance. And in fact, Jill Kimball, our L, one of our L directors, will say it's not a bad thing to have a few involved because not every school has a large cohort of kids receiving those services. So sometimes it can make for a bit of a, a more comfortable uh, environment. But we're just trying to strike a balance, and we feel like 15 is an appropriate number uh, for this upcoming school year. Sorry, what is a J1 student? So a J1 is a true exchange. That's not a tuition um, student. And we then get in return from a local um, I'm trying to think of the name of the club. It's Kiwanis Club, I think, that right. authorizes the exchange. And then we, in turn, get opportunity to have raffles and or um, applications for students to travel abroad in a free exchange as well. Okay. So it works both ways. Right. So that is the uh, summary of our international program. And at this point, I'd like to just uh, say thank you again for supporting the program and be happy to answer any uh, questions or follow-ups to the presentation. I love that you call them friends. I love how integrated they, they get with the school. I mean, I only had the opportunity to observe one of our students who joined the soccer team. And it was just great to see the um, interaction between the players and, you know, that sort of matrix of friends right you know, out of the gate in the fall. So um, he was just one of the team, brought some great skills, which was excellent. <laughs> um, but it's just nice. They just get so involved in everything. And it's a, a great opportunity for our students and obviously the, the students who are here. So thank you for pushing it, creating it, shepherding it, and growing it. And it's been great. Yeah, I, I feel the same way. <laughs> uh, that, uh, you know, the exchange is not just for the kids who are coming but it's also for kids here to see what the world is like, a little glimpse of it, if mm. you will, right? Um, I recall um, speaking with Ricardo, who came from Italy, uh, and it was amazing to hear his experiences a little bit through the robotics program. And he's actually volunteering at an event tomorrow in town. That's how integrated these kids have uh, become and so I really applaud all the effort that you've done and bringing such a wonderful presentation to us to kind of get to see what all the kids have been doing. So many thanks to you and also Mr. Longoria. Mr. Longoria and Ms. Tice, the three of us are kind of the, the team that operates this 
um, and we work well together and we all have the same ideas about what a successful program would be and so that is is nice that's good work and, and I, I love your families. quote oh thank you yeah. I'm a huge Dave Matthews fan, yeah. so I really appreciate it. I was unsure about that. picking him. I was like, no, is he no, that, was, that or not? was a win right there. That was a win. But I, I like the, your, the whole sort of intro to this, because that's what I really think is so awesome about it, is it just gives a face to, you know, you don't hear about the people in Italy. You have a face now, and you know there's this is a person. Mm -hmm. And it just, I think that makes a huge difference to kids um, here, anywhere, but for sure in Hopkinton. So, I, you know, it's amazing. You do great work. Thanks. Yeah. Well done. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Enjoy the rest of your evening. Thank, Thank you all very much. Thanks, Josh. So that brings us into our financial report. Thank you. Um, as we continue to march down to the year-end close, um, right now we are still running a positive variance of 66,000. Um, this was through the, the early part of May. So I've been working with each department and really um, – you know, one, making sure they have what they need to close the year in terms of anything that they may need for students and, and teachers, but then also to kind of tighten up what's already been encumbered in making sure that we're keeping an eye on those purchase orders, closing them out when we need to. So now is when we tighten things up. Hard to say anything at all when you say we're good right now at, you know, Still so good. yeah, it's, that's Still great, good. fantastic. Thank you for yeah, keeping us you. in Thank shape you. financially. Mm -hmm. I appreciated the um, the revised revolving accounts report. Uh, are you just, can I talk about that now? I didn't know if yeah. you um, With the notes about what the accounts are, I think that's really helpful. I had some questions and that was really nice to see the notes on the same page. Mm -hmm. for those of us who lose track so so they'll, they'll be there now going forward that's, that's great. great thank you yeah, thank you thank awesome. you all right then that uh, if there are no more questions or comments moves us into the uh, superintendent's report okay also I just have a few of the events that are going on uh, that have gone on uh, recently on May 8th Emma McNamara did her book reading in the middle school courtyard I don't know if you are aware that she is uh, a published author this is available on Amazon if you're interested um, but she did a reading and um, it was just lovely to see her aglow um, so. we saw if I'm not mistaken something she had written for a science publication yes, yes. yes. the yes. nonfiction piece and she said it was outside her comfort zone. That's I right, remember her right. speaking mm -hmm. to that. Uh, we do have them coming in to do the presentation for the Upper Charles Trail tonight. You know that it's later in our agenda. But Tim Person and I did walk it recently. So if you take a look at the picture on the left, you can sort of see the start of the trail. It's actually kind of nice and dry there, but it's really quite open um, without any work having been done to it at all. Uh, in the upper right hand corner, that's the only place where the trail actually sort of gets close to a field that our kids might be using at some point in time. I think that's field 10. And um, down below, you can see where the trail sort of spills out and it's very wet down there. Um, that's uh, closer to the turf field. So the beginning is over by, you know, sort of the driveway to Hopkins and the end is over by the turf field. Dr. Kavanaugh, did you? Determine is that beginning where the kids walk to get to, to K lot? Is that part of the cut through to the parking lot, or is that a separate trail in the same patch of woods? So uh, they take that trail to get to the cut through for K lot. Right, it kind of bends, so right? So the K lot kind of uh, the, the path they take to K lot kind of forks off from the street. So it's coincident to start, yep. and then they diverge. Okay, thanks. Elmwood had the Colonial Crafts Day. Uh, so it, it's very interesting to go and, and see this. They're doing, you know, finger crocheting. and But where they do their tinsmith work, uh, if it's in a classroom that's close to the parking lot, you can be outside in the driveway and hear all those little hammers going ding, 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 ding. <laughs> it's kind of crazy. But they, they are all in costume, and they're all excited to be you know, doing their crafts. It's just a lovely event. Um, you will recall that we lost Cindy Martell, so the Elmwood School has now developed um, the Cindy Martell Reading Corner. 
Uh, so it's just a beautiful little space. The wall mural was just recently completed. And the other thing that's going on at Elmwood is they are now selling diversity buttons for $5. And the proceeds from their diversity buttons will go to fund some of their diversity events. They have added the Chinese Lunar New Year. They've got you know international night coming up next week on the 23rd, I think. Yes. Yes. And, um, and where can you buy a diversity button? I think you can actually buy it right from the Elmwood School. Okay. Yeah. In fact, there's a link on that as well to like do it online. Oh, no? there may be a link mm -hmm. too. It's um, cute. It's nice. Mm -hmm. Jen and I just got ours tonight. Ah. Yeah. Uh, Mrs. Carver was good enough to bring them to us. So. It's a great design. I don't know who did it. It is. Yeah. Really Isn't good. it really cute? Yeah. Uh, I don't know if Tim wants <laughs> to speak to this, but we've got a good old-fashioned sinkhole at the Elmwood School. <laughs> Um, and the <laughs> story is that we really did. Do we know how deep that is? We have no idea, right? I would say it's probably about three or four feet deep. Yeah. Probably Have we had a sinkhole in that area before? I feel so like. A little further back, there was one uh, prior to me starting here, so probably three, three or four years yeah. ago, I think. Um, much smaller. Okay. Very curious about the sinkhole. Oh, yes. <laughs> We've had many conversations about the sinkhole at my house. There's so an what engineering lesson yeah. in there somewhere. I don't know what oh, it yeah. is, but I told him there were no sinkholes around here, and he goes, Oh no, mommy, there was one on our playground. Oh. So <laughs> yeah. That's correct. Yeah. Oh, he's right. <laughs> Put me right down. <laughs> there is a link on the Hopkinton HPTA oh, website for those diversity buttons. Oh great, thank you. Mm -hmm. Uh, last Friday, the Grand March before the Junior Prom. Um, that is also kind of an amazing event. The kids just look beautiful. And, you know, Western Nurseries does a really nice job of making the place look just lovely. So I thought I would bring you up to date on enrollment. <laughs> this is always a good one. So, you know, we had a conversation with the voters at town meeting. Um, since the annual town meeting, we've had 12 new students enroll. Uh, I think at town meeting I had said we had 217 kindergarten kids enrolled, which was true, but uh, what we hadn't thought about was we have kids who are currently in our preschool who will move right into kindergarten who didn't need to enroll. So our, our kindergarten total at this point in time is exactly at 250. Last year we were at 264. So we may be um, in a little bit of a dicey place with kindergarten. Our other two very large grades right now, grade six has 308 enrolled and grade eight has 316. Um, two of our recent enrollees are also ninth graders. Is so. that, sorry to interrupt, but no. is that the current eighth grade, not next year's eighth grade, or is that? It's next year's eighth grade. Next year's, I think. Yes, it's next, these are next year's numbers for sure. Next what is, do you have current seventh grade was small, so that's a big, I mean, not small, but smaller. That's a big jump for them. Oh, maybe we do have the wrong numbers then. I, I don't know. Something did make me think that big. we had. Now, is this one of, you know, I remember there being a bubble class which is in high school right now, right? So, I want to say they're Great juniors. Time. Oh, is it? Okay. Maybe they're maybe so, right sophomores, I think. Sophomore, right. sophomore class is, is quite large. So it's, how big is it and are we getting there with these numbers? Do we know what that bubble class size is? Uh, I, it's well over 300. Eighth grade yeah. is pretty big. It's so over 300 it, for sure. Right, no, but I'm seeing these for the first time. I mean, all, almost all the times that I've seen, the oh, numbers have been below 300 yep. for almost all grades besides that bubble class. Mm -hmm. And now I'm seeing these two Above. about 300 for the first time so. in my recollection. Yeah. No, I agree with you. And it's it's usually like 290 something. Six, the current eighth grade is, yes. over, is over 300. Right. So the, the NESDEC report for sixth grade, and this is using, I believe, the October 1 uh, enrollment data at the time. So sixth grade for this year, October 1, was 301. Eighth grade was 313, to give you a reference point. So that must be this year. Yeah, so that's correct. And that's this year's sixth grade and eighth grade then. And which is the largest class size? Um, What's grade 10? Grade 10. How, and how grade 10 is, is, well, 323 was what it um, was yeah. in October. Yep. yep. Wow. We have multiple classes getting to that number. And the graduating class, I'm guessing, is smaller than the current eighth grade? Graduating class is 286. 
to that. The high, this high school is going to be um, hopping with bursting at the bursting seams. Bursting the, the right answer. Yep. So to that end, <laughs> uh, I think last time we were together, I had mentioned that, or maybe it was at town meeting, I had mentioned that we brought in DRA, which was the architectural firm that had done Marathon. And so they toured the high school with Mrs. Rothmick and Mr. Person, I should say I brought in, they brought in uh, DRA. And after that tour, they submitted to us a proposal. And you can see what the proposal says. Um, that they will do an assessment of the subject area identified as well as an assessment of the full faculty, uh, full facility um, for space utilization. So that's really good for us if they come in here and just take a look at the entire high school and figure out if we are best using our space and how it might be alternate, alternatively utilized. Uh, the goal of the effort would be to identify the maximum classroom space that may be developed throughout additions, through additions, renovations, and the repurposing of existing space. The cost for that is $9,650, and I think that that will be much Money very well spent for us to figure out what the addition is going to look like, get a cost for the addition, and get a cost for any other repurposing that we see fit, which will be good when if we need to present this information to town meeting to get a capital project, um, so that we have you know some accurate information for them. Dr. Kevin, is that separate from the growth study that we funded through town meeting? That is separate. Okay, so this is targeted for the high school. There's yes. no overlap. Okay. Yeah, and you. The two of you can probably speak better yeah, to that I mean, than I can. Yeah, I mean, really what we're looking for is an order of magnitude in terms of cost to put that, you know, three-story addition onto the back of that wing. Um, the school capacity study will give us different configurations, but this will give us an actual cost to build that. Okay. And what does that, you know, what does that mean? And then we could take that original estimate if we want to go further and go into that deeper dive then they would, you know, be able to use that, put together, you know, design, engineering, you know, all those next steps. Okay. So this is really just that initial phase, really focusing on that addition. The school capacity will look at us district wide. Well, and, oh, sorry, sorry. It's, it says classroom space, and I know the addition is classroom space. So I'm wondering if either of those studies will get at free space, like just traffic volumes of students up and down stairs during passing time or you know who do we have at during study blocks where are they just sort of the non-classroom space and how many students can you know safely and comfortably pass stairways hallway, hallways so I think the school capacity study would get more at that get to that okay thank you when will the capacity study be complete and when will this particular study be complete so this one, I believe the, um, so keep in mind that this is all going to be July 1 money. So this will begin July 1. I believe the time frame for this was six to eight weeks for okay. this to be completed. Um, the school capacity study, we're putting together that scope now, and then we will go out and um, knock on doors for people to give us a cost estimate for the scope of services that we're looking for but nothing really can begin until July 1. Okay. And I would imagine that the school capacity study would at least take another six to eight weeks as well. Okay, so it could be sometime in the fall when we get the Correct. result. Correct, yeah. You know, and this really, you know, the goal is to have a good number that we could then bring to town meeting. Um, the school capacity study could then lead to other triggers of things that we may want to discuss further. Okay. Thank, thank you. Yeah, thank you for bringing, and this is critical, looking at those numbers in sixth grade and eighth grade, and mm -hmm. yeah. thank you for bringing this. Try to be proactive as much as we can be, right? I mean, yeah. Yeah, and I want to say thank you to Susan and Tim, too, for this work. They're working very hard on this. And that was my last slide, but we've already had a lot of questions, so. <laughs> I was also thinking uh, that we need to set summer dates for our meetings. Yes. yes. Yes, we do. Okay. Look at our schedules and come back to that. Right. Okay. It's nice to think summer's actually coming. <laughs> oh, it might. It might. All right, so that uh, brings us into the school committee chair report, and I have approved the payroll warrant S19023, which has been included in your packet. I have also approved warrant 19-091. 
19-093 and 1-094. They are also uh, included in the packet. So school committee office hours, I'm, we met since we yes. did the senior center, but we uh, it would be nice to, and we can talk offline since we don't have anything new to report, to find a date to do something in June. So we can put that to think about. Uh, anyone have liaison reports? I have a few. Go ahead. Go ahead. Um, at the tech uh, meeting that we had, we approved the annual budget. Uh, I'd shared that with all of you a few weeks ago. That went very smoothly. We also reviewed um, Dr. McGonagall, and that was uh, very well. You know, everybody had positive things to say. In my own experience working with her, she's always been very good in taking feedback and converting it around, and I shared that. She actually um, had taken on the request related to doing a workshop on giftedness, which was attended by about 50 educators from across Massachusetts. So I was very thankful for that. Um, one other thought um, on the tech front is because it's a collaborative and it's serving 15 districts, is we can utilize some of these services as a collaborative. And um, I talked to a few folks, and it looks like uh, conversations on diversity and diversity training are happening in all collaboratives, or in all many districts which are part of the collaborative. So I'd shared this thought with Dr. Kavanaugh to see if we can explore um, working through tech, if any kind of training could be provided. Uh, I mean, there will be some kind of training that can be global where, where we can take, and there might be some which are very specific, but to look to see if there is any cost savings um, through our partnership with tech. Um, that was one. The other one is on the Marathon Fund Committee. I had a very good meeting with Josh Grossetti from the IT department, and uh, we are working to put together a web page on their webs on the town's website, and we are modeling it after the historical district commission's website, and trying to put in some information. There's lots of good work that goes on. Uh, we reviewed lots of scholarships that came from our high school athletes. Um, I think there were about 43 or so uh, scholarship uh, requests that came in, and we picked three male and three female. Um, and that was very interesting to see the impact of uh, various athletic programs that the kids have undertaken, how it has impacted them. It was wonderful to review all of that. Mm, the other one is on the school website front. Uh, Meg and I had uh, put together, um, you know, you had all shared some uh, verbiage related to each of the subcommittees and what the work is. We had looked at it and kind of collated and tried to put them into categories of how our subcommittees are formed. Um, but we are holding back on posting that based on feedback we received from uh, Mr. Ghosh that right now we are in the process of moving over, so hold off on that. But at least in terms of content, that work is going on. Um, on the senior center front on May 23rd, um, there is a dance that is happening with the Happy Healers Club and the seniors. And I'm very thankful to Dr. Kavanaugh and uh, Ms. Renaud, who has been championing this. And uh, I think more collaboration between the schools and the senior center and just bringing the community together. So if any of you is able to join, That'll be fabulous. It's an ice cream social, and uh, the Holliston band is coming, so that should be all fun. Sorry, yeah. it's it's with our senior center. Yes. And the Holliston band is coming. That's right. Interesting. Yes. And what date is it? May twenty third, and I can confirm the timing. Um, I, I believe it's around twelve noonish. That's what I remember, um, but I can confirm the time back to you. And it'd be great Next to have Thursday. people there. Next Thursday. Right. Um, the other thing I want to just give a quick update on is um, the work that you all asked us, uh, asked Meg and I to look at with regard to the diversity and inclusion subcommittee uh, or to see what it would be. Um, I had a very productive conversation with Dr. Kavanaugh and we talked a little bit about what that might mean, what would be the boundaries, etc. cetera. Um, I, I put something together, um, some statistics, some thoughts on what it could be, like a working group or what have you. And Dr. Kavanaugh and I, we want to just sit and review and see 
what would be the best and most effective way for um, us as a school committee to support the work that she is doing. So that's the update. That's it. Thank you. Love the um, the collaborative bringing the community connected with the schools and at the senior center. So. Yeah. I'm excited. I'm very thankful that all of you, even you know, even with the office hours, uh, I think we have done very, very well there. And I must also give credit to Amy Beck. Uh -huh. I think she has been very open as well and supportive in so many ways. Great. Thank you. I have one. Um, the Marathon School Building Committee met um, Monday. And um, just some little things. One of the things that I think in particular is so great is that having Mike Shepard on that committee, he is, his mind is always thinking ahead. And so he is actually working to um, make sure the order of conditions that were set out for the wetlands for the construction of that building doesn't come back to bite us 25 years later, like some other orders of conditions have come back over the last couple of years so anyway he's he's very proactive about it and making sure that things are set so he's he's been making phone calls and and connecting people and saying where do you need me to sign who do you need to sign and and making sure that that happens which is great um, so we don't have to look forward to that 25 years from now um, and then the other thing that I think is is great that um, as the building gets lived in as the number of kids in that building has increased steadily over the over time one of the things that Lauren noticed is that um, one of the uh, sidewalks that initially she didn't think were go was going to get a lot of traffic is made of so uh, stone dust and it, it is used as a primary entrance and exit for the building so um, they're going to work on getting some quotes that we can use through the um, building committee to pave that so that they're not constantly tracking stone, stone dust in and out of the building because the kids do use that as their way in and out of the building to get, I think, out to the playground. I think, I don't know, everybody's nodding their head, so maybe you know more than me, but it's, I think it's to the playground, um, which is great. And then um, the other thing, just for the sake of um, anyone who's interested in knowing about the air conditioning as we get into warmer months, um, it's not always going to be running. That was one of my questions. I'm like, this building's going to be empty. Are we going to have our AC on all the time? So um, ESY is going to be there, and they'll make sure those folks are comfortable, um, but that it is the first year, so just trying to work out those kinks. I thought that was good information to bring back to you all, so we're not, we're not paying for AC for the entire building the entire year, or the entire summer, at least. That's not the plan at this moment. Um, and that's about it, I guess. Thank you. Yep. Yep. So the Youth Commission um, held their first ACT prep course in conjunction with Education Station and with support of the school committee and the schools. And it was very successful. So next year they'll run two of those ACT prep programs, um, which last for several weeks. And they offer it at a discounted price for those who need the financial assistance. Um, but it's wonderful they're doing that for the community because I know those other, the, the proper programs at Kaplan or wherever else are very expensive. Um, little word from CPAC, uh, we are still accepting submissions for the INSPIRE Award. So if anyone has a child who's on an IEP and there's a particular teacher or staff member or cafeteria worker or bus driver, who's been just great with your kid, please submit a little paragraph about that person so we can give them a certificate of appreciation and a small token. Uh, Meg, I think you also had a comment on the school, uh, the website of the school committee menu, because there was a thought to kind of retake the pictures of the school committee, and Meg said, why bother wasting that money? Um, yeah. Why, why spend money on a photographer? I just want a photo of an oak tree in my place. Thank you very much. Mr. Ghosh brought in a photographer, a recent graduate, um, Olivia, I forget her last name. Andrean? I'm not sure. Who came, I think, for one or two days like last week and did a lot of photography for the new website. And I think he plans to bring her back again. Um, so there may be a knock on our door to look photogenic. For, for a period, and I think he's keen to get some for group, a period. Some very group short photos, period. a very short period. We only have to, like five minutes, but I think he'd like some group photos too for the website, so it's not just individual headshots. But. Right. And, and I, I hear you, all, and I think um, 
I'm open to the idea that if any member doesn't want their picture posted, that's okay too. Right. So. Thank you. Oak trees are nice. Oak trees are much more interesting. To I have a quick web website update. Um, it's very exciting. The website subcommittee voted unanimously to approve the design of the homepage. I have to say it went through several extra rounds of design review um, with Mr. Gosh and his team and the, the parents who, on the subcommittee who have been um, very engaged and um, providing a lot of input. And they were holding fast to the things that are very important to the community. Um, and I think I feel confident that the design we ended up with provides um, nice places on the home page to capture all the important things, the events, the news, um, opportunities for us to say something about the district, some social media and so forth. So I'm excited when you get to see it. We're not doing the big reveal just yet. Um, following that, we did the mobile review, mobile design review uh, first round. and. Um, while generally it takes the home page and just sort of shrinks it to mobile and stacks, there is actually quite a lot to tweak to make it look the way we want it to. So that's kind of where we are right now. Because of all the design iterations to get it um, where we wanted it, the, um, well, the good news is that the home page is still going to come to us in July. So we should be launching the home page, as far as I know, in July. We have not slipped that schedule. The um, school pages may defer to August. Um, which the home page will give us an opportunity to do our registrations, do all you know, have all the content that's actually important in the summer. Um, the principals will have more time in July and August to get their content on the home pages up. So I'm thrilled that we didn't have to slip the home page because I was very nervous about that. So we won't have to continue hosting our existing site, incurring that extra cost, and so forth. Yeah, I, I enjoyed seeing the demo. That yeah. looks so nice. Thank I think you. it's amazing. It really it's really good. Yes. And you know, we were focused on things like you know intuitive navigation, good search, good access to events and news, and all the things that the community said they wanted. So hopefully, when it gets rolled out, they'll feel that they can use the site to do what they need to do. I have one other. Um, it's kind of not a subcommittee thing, but just a shout out. Related to the seniors, we do invite them, as an FYI, to the POPs concert, which is happening this Sunday at 3.30 in the High School Athletic Center. It's an amazing concert. Every musical group in the high school lines up around the gym, at the athletic center, I should say. And, you know, we bounce from chorus to jazz band to orchestra to band. The seniors come over. Um, there are tables with refreshments and so forth. It's a great concert. So if anyone is bored or just wants some great music, I encourage you to come by. It's really a highlight of the year for the musicians and the parents and the community. And the jazz band is playing in Boston at the Hat Shell also on Sunday. I think at noon is the time for the performance. Um, it's an honor because they were recognized at the gold level. So along with all the other gold winners, they have an opportunity to perform in Boston. It's our first ever, so they're very excited. When is the Pops concert? Sunday. This Sunday. They're both this Here. Sunday. It's a busy Sunday of music. So um, the Pops concert has been shifted to 3:30 okay. in the afternoon. Thank you. Oh, so the kids can do both. They have yes. to do both because okay, all great. the jazz band people are also in chorus and you know oh, band right. and whatever right. else. Yeah. They're actually taking buses for students who want to go to to watch and to be oh, in good. Boston, which is nice. So. That is good. Great, thank you. I had a, a quick update with the bridge. Uh, it had a tremendous outpouring of support uh, from people who wanted to provide snacks and things like that. that. That is one of the needs that was identified in the schools so that people, children who don't have snacks aren't going hungry and they're not sitting awkwardly at their desk. Currently, we have had staff members who are providing out of their own pockets for kids in the community is stepping in to do that. So I, I have received a tremendous number of actual stuff from people in the community and also really support from people wanting to help move this effort forward so I was very excited <laughs> yeah, I, I saw that a little bit on Facebook Nancy and I just love the idea and I'm so glad you and uh, Don are doing this fabulous work thank and, you and some great help at, with people in each building it really has and from the youth and family services it really has been a feel good thing to see where as a community we're able to try to support people in the kids in our buildings i have had 
emails and messages from people who have been impacted by things like this directly. And you don't always see the faces and hear people, but it, it, there are real needs. There are kids going hungry that we don't always see. So that's. Yeah. I'm also hoping with the positive variance that Ms. Rathameke is reporting, maybe next year we will be able to earmark some funds even to um, support the work that you're doing. So we'll see. Thank you. Anyway, that brings us into new business. And the first item we have is the Lou and Kathy White Scholarship. So each year you are asked to um, approve payment from the town treasurer for the Lou and Kathy White Scholarship. Although there are many, many scholarships, for whatever reason, this one was set up just a little bit differently. So I am um, requesting and recommending that the school committee authorize payment from the town treasurer for the Lou and Kathy White Memorial Scholarship in the amount of $500. So moved. Second. Thank you. All those in favor? Aye. Yes. I guess all three of us. <laughs> there was a mass exodus. Um, Can I ask a question? You? Do you have an item that you want to speak to instead of having to stay all night? If that's okay? If with, yeah? So I think Tim is here. But I think Jane is also coming. Yes. Oh, for the trails. Yeah. Okay. 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 All right. All right. Uh, well, I know that, but I figured I, you know, I mean, it's exciting at 8.15 as it is at 8.45, so. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah, of but maybe when Jane gets here, we can move them right up. Definitely. Depending on where we are, okay. right? Sure. Moving on to new business item B, accept board of directors. Dr. Kavner. So for the past year, I have been the... Um, Hopkinton representative on the board of directors that accept, and I am asking that uh, you vote to appoint me to that same position on the board of directors. Any questions? That's okay. I'm seeking a motion to move to appoint Dr. Carol Kavanaugh to the accept board of directors for the 2019-2020 school year. There's a typo there, there on the no agenda, that, yeah. if that could be corrected. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Yes. Aye. Okay. And so this passes. It does. Moving on to item C, Elmwood School gift account, Dr. Kavner. All right, so we have a few gift account um, approvals in a row here. The first one is um, to approve $299.79 from Box Tops to the Elmwood School gift account. I'm looking for a motion to move to accept the $299.79 donation for Elmwood School gift account. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Yes. yes. Aye. Great. So it passes. And on to our chair again. And where I uh, run uh, We are now at the Hopkins. We did the Elmwood. Right? Oh, yes. Uh -huh. There we go. That. Okay, so this is another box top donation. This one is going into the Hopkins School gift account. And I'm looking for your approval to accept $312.20. So moved. Motion by Mina. Second. Second by Jen. All those in favor? Aye. Yes. Yes. And that passes. That moves us into the next Hopkins. Yes. So the Hopkins School has a fifth grade talent show fundraiser. This year they raised $3,011. And I am requesting and recommending that you accept this money uh, for the Hopkins School gift account. This is an impressive amount, and I approve. I mean, I make a motion to move. Mm -hmm. Motion by Mina. Is there a second? <laughs> I'll second. I'll second what Mina said. Second <laughs> by Jen. All those in favor? Yes. yes. Uh, it must be quite a talent show. It is, it is. The amount yeah. of work that those yes. volunteers put in to make this happen is unbelievable, and the kids are amazing. Unbelievable. I so. think there was like a record number of acts this year, too. Oh, yes, yes. There were That's requests great. put out to say, if you were thinking of doing a solo, if you want to try and team up, there were so many kids who were so excited to do it. So I love awesome. the fifth yeah. That's a great show. It's so fun. Yep. All right, so moving on to the middle school gift account, I'm requesting and recommending that you accept $500 from Hopkinton Mobile Station Alliance Energy LLC to be put in the middle school gift account. So moved. Motion by Mina. Second. Second. By Jen. All those in favor? Uh, yes. Aye. So passes. That moves us to letter G. Okay. This is another one for the middle school gift account. Uh, the uh, gift is in the amount of $3,641.55 from the Alpha Omega Council. 
uh, for the Boston Marathon, and this will go into the middle school gift account. Can I ask a question? Mm -hmm. uh, is do you know are they still um, trying to afford sound equipment for the courtyard? Do you know where they are? With I don't know okay. that. Susan, do you maybe know? Are they trying to get sound equipment for the courtyard and the middle school still? I'm not sure. I don't know where they are. Okay. Okay. I feel like lights and sound were the two main holdovers after construction, and I just wasn't sure if this is funding that. It's great that we got this gift. Great. Sorry. Oh, so we, we need a motion. motion. Motion on that. So moved. Motion by Mina and a second. Second. By Jen. All those in favor? Aye. Yes. Aye. And that so carries. Okay. Um, and you have a request from um, Ms. King from the athletic department. Uh, we have three unified sports I think we have to approve the coaching stipends for. So if we take a look at those. Remind myself of what they are. Track and basketball. Yeah. Two were unified, one was football, I think. Okay. Middle school football. Yes, so unified basketball, unified track, and middle school football. Um, and she is looking to put all of those coaching positions in at seven units. So we are looking for an approval for that. I make a motion to accept the coaching stipends. Motion second. By Meg and a second by Mina. All those in favor? Yes. Aye. Aye. Yes, and so that also um, carries. All right, and here's our last gift account. This is going into the marathon gift account. Um, Twenty-four dollars from Hannaford's. I make a motion to accept. A second. Second motion by Mina. A second by Jen. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Carries. And that brings us into Old Business A, the Upper Charles Trail. We need to wait. We're a little sure. early, right? A couple yeah. minutes early. Yeah. I do think that Jane is planning to okay. be here. Okay. Yes. So. So do we want to um, go out of order to item B and come back to that when she, if she comes? Is that sure. I think that's probably a good idea. Okay. So the school committee, committee procedures, the agenda planning, you'll remember that Mina and I, Mina has really spearheaded this work, and we had met um, to discuss the agenda planning. <coughs> and worked on coming up with language to make it clear for people going forward uh, on how to bring agenda items forward, not just for us, but for people in the community who might have things that they're interested in seeing the school committee look at. Uh, and kind of the fallback is always that it, to be something under our purview, but also to make a clear path for people to know what to do uh, going forward. So I'm open to edits, suggestions, comments, questions, anything. Yes, we were also looking to um, perhaps learn from other committees as well, but we wanted this as the first step uh, to see if, if Dr. Kavanaugh had any feedback or any of you had any feedback, if this seems reasonable. And are there things in, the pro in how you see what we're doing as practice that we could be doing better or that I have, we have not captured accurately? I think the biggest thing that will help inform this process mm -hmm. is that calendar, that drumbeat mm -hmm. of things that happen on a regular basis, because I think, um, I, I feel that it exists. I'm living it this year, and I know that something comes up, and a question will come up, and we go, oh, yes, that's when we do that. And if when you're new, you don't know that that's when you do it. So I think I continue to push for that calendar, because I think knowing what's coming up helps um, when you think about agenda items sure. that you might want to add as well. And the only other thing I would say is, um, is there a process by which the chair and our superintendent would um, potentially determine if something should be considered an executive session or not that might come up? Because sometimes one doesn't know when one is requesting um, a discussion and as everyone knows, we can only discuss things as a committee at a posted meeting. And sometimes, you know, a request might end up um, touching on something that's contractual or that it is unclear to the committee. So would that, be, would that determination be made 
So that determination, I think, would be made in the agenda planning yeah. session, which would include Perfect. the chair and, and the vice chairs. The model we've been trying, we're not always able, I wasn't able to be at the last one, and yeah. sometimes we, it just varies. But the ideal is for the chair and the vice chair to do it together. Okay. To look at, um, the, I mean, the really very specific legal exemptions that ha require it to be an executive session and to kind of look at, does it fall under litigation, does it fall under contract negotiations, things of that nature would be my... Okay. Uh, I, I think uh, you bring up uh, a valid point, you know, again, thinking from the perspective of someone who's coming brand new. If they bring up something during the liaison reports as something which they shouldn't be, um, so I think just to clarify what are those items which need to go through, go to an executive session discussion, and those items must only be sent via email and not brought up? I, I would think, right, if it is related to any performance or what have you, right? There are stipulations around what goes into executive session. So we need to be so careful about what of, we say here. So in terms of, if I'm, I just want to make sure I understand what you guys are, because I think you're saying the same thing, is that you're not talking about the actual discussion of the item. You're talking about the bringing it up to ask if it can be on the agenda. Correct. Okay. That's, that's right. the piece I was missing. Sometimes when you're new and you have a question, you don't always know what you're asking. Right. Even it may be a valid topic, but you don't always. It, I would just look to the, the chair, the planning committee, or whatever, who's receiving yeah. the request to then make a determination. Yes. So I, I think it can be asked in a public session if it can be put on the agenda without violating. Correct. Because you're not going to For the most part. Details, mm -hmm. yeah. I, I think you can't, right, because you can't go into detail if it's not on the agenda anyway. Right. But, but I, I think just having some clarity as to which all are the items and to what extent can you speak even about what you want on the agenda. Yes. Um, yep. And just saying that things of that nature should probably be sent via email to the chair. Yeah. So, yes. So, in I that brings Maybe back to a good point. It would be important to include in this information the exemptions to open right, meeting law for executive sessions session so right. that people right. have it right there and don't have to kind of, mm -hmm. I, I think I Googled it at the beginning, right. when I, but you know that it's right there. Can I make one other, I mean, this isn't a big deal, but it, yeah. as, for, as you said, for new people, would it make sense just to have an agenda item, a standing agenda item that similar to our lays and reports, the expectation yep. is you come prepared with something, you don't think of it off the cuff, but if you do have something that you want to put on the agenda, because putting it in liaison reports, it's not really a liaison report, well, it, the, it's an agenda it's, item. Sorry, so. that's not clear. I, I think what I put, it's the opportunity to ask to have it put on the agenda, not the opportunity to actually discuss it. No, I, okay. right, I understand that, but I mean, oh, yeah. having that having opportunity it, yes. be included in liaison reports mm -hmm. is fine. But it's not yeah. really the liaison report. So would it make sense just to have a standing, and like we do sure. already, superintendent's report, liaison yeah. reports, um, future agenda items, and then you know the the expectation, I guess, the norms, the procedures, whatever you want to call them, that we all agree on at the beginning of the year. Yep. You don't come up with something that night and just decide you want to, you, you have it prepared ahead of time, so you're not just throwing stuff out there and taking up a half an hour of time on future agenda items. You just you know ahead of time yeah. what you want to have added to it. Yeah. Yeah, I think um, um, when that Nancy means. started off her role as chair, she had done that mm -hmm. uh, at several it meetings. Yeah, future remember? agenda items. Right, future we agenda items. Yeah, that, and I, I think perhaps one of the procedures to also think about is that when an agenda item is proposed, do we keep track of it and kind of log it to find that Thanks. spot within the calendar, if you will. Yes. Mm -hmm. Right. So I think that's the other piece to work on as we look at the calendar. What we can do, uh, perhaps, uh, you know, we had thought of putting that calendar on the uh, school committee page also, so we are held back a little bit right now, but it doesn't stop us from putting something on a Google Drive, perhaps, or we can figure out a way mm -hmm. how we can make it available. Mm -hmm. right. I know, we're good. getting into summer. It's good, though. Yeah. So, uh, it's good to get it written break. down, though. It's, you guys are yeah. good. Smart. Yeah, we are going slow, Jen, based on your feedback. Take four. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, no. yeah. which feedback? Uh, it is about how many procedures we pick to oh. Oh. Um, yeah. elaborate on. <laughs> Just pick a couple on. at a time. <laughs> yes. Okay. So, just so I can kind of clean this up, and do we want to have a future agenda? 
standing thing to go back to that. Does that make sense? I, yeah, if, I, I if like that idea. Think it's okay. I, I like that idea. Yeah. yeah. All right. And perhaps it's right after liaison reports. Yep. Yep. Makes perfect sense. But give it a five minute time slot. Yes. Okay. Yeah. But so, I, and I right. think that's how we kind of right. moved away from it. Was it right. felt like it was, it was taking, taking up a lot of times, and our list was growing faster than we were able to keep up with right. in right. a timely way. Yes, we were a very active committee when we started the year. Yes, yes ambitious. Brevity is always welcome. <laughs> Indeed. Okay. So I have shifted that in, and we can uh, think about that a little now. I've got to go back to the. I've lost my agenda here in trying to fix that. Yeah. We're going go go, to go back to the Upper Charles. Charles. Yes, thank you. You guys are oh, business E. Thank you. Come on. All right, so. <coughs> Hello. Welcome back. Okay. Hi. Yes. Yes, thank you for coming back, and thank you, Tim, for your patience tonight. Of course. <laughs> So we are bringing back Jane and Tim um, to talk about the Upper Charles Trail Committee. And ultimately, this evening, we are hoping that you will, as a school committee, approve um, to construct a portion of the Upper Charles Trail on school grounds, as outlined in the Upper Charles Trail Committee uh, Alternate 3, I believe. Yes. Yes. So I am here to answer any more questions that you may have had since the last time we met. And I'm not sure, but I have a feeling there may be a few. I had a couple of questions which I think have been answered, but for the sake of the viewing sure. public, I will just share them. Um, I, would, I, I support alternate three. I think it looks like a really solid plan. I have concerns about one and two, so if for some reason this should fall back to one or two, I got a little nervous about sharing the roadway on Loop Road, which is already so... Um, heavily trafficked and now we're adding the buses exiting and so forth Correct. so I, but I love alternate three because it mm -hmm. goes away from the loop road I did see on here that there was a um, an indication of a stoplight at the end of the loop road and I know that um, Mrs. Rothermark has talked to the town about that I think that's not in the scope of this work as I understand it no um, this is very preliminary and uh, with the next step that we hope with your permission if we get permission to come on the property and uh, you know um, that you envision the trail going through here and we're all aiming toward that our next step would be to apply for the engineering um, feasibility study with that they would have the traffic engineers in there and further study to determine if that were necessary or not it's definitely not part of this right now okay. Um, they would also be subject to public hearings and, of course, your input at that point. So, you know, your input would weigh heavily, okay. whatever we would do. Yeah. And so, as we had talked about earlier tonight, um, Dr. Kavanaugh, Dr. Kavanaugh and I had a chance to walk the entire trail. We both put on our hiking boots that day. And <laughs> No picnic, unfortunately, but um, I just went. <laughs> it actually wasn't too bad. So oh. the trail itself is pretty wide open as you walk through it. Um, you can tell immediately where the rail bed was at one point um, and what they had kind of done to remove the rail bed. And I think that's why at the low point it gets a, you know, it holds a lot of water. Um, um, it's mainly at the end of the trail when you're coming out um, towards the center trail. And um, I think that um, the engineers will uh, figure out how to, much like the center trail, I think they went a little bit um, to the left or the right, depending on which way you're looking at it, to get out of that kind of waterway on the center trail. And I'm imagining that they'll probably do a similar um, thing at this one to line up with the center trail a little better and come out of the, the woods because it has a little incline when you if you've never been down there has a little incline to get up there but i think uh you know the trail being clear the kids do um, use that to get to k lot as we talked about earlier i, I think having it cleared and um, the way they've maintained center trail has always been phenomenal and they and they continue to do so with uh the additional cross-country trails that they installed in the last year or so so uh, you know i think it's been a, a good partnership with us 
the Upper Charles Trail Committee um, thus far. So I don't I don't see why it would be any different moving forward with um, you know a plan of, of this magnitude. That's great. Other questions? No. I know I hammered you with questions last time. I'm sorry. I felt bad yeah. about that afterwards. But it, but it was really because at first I was like, it is overwhelming. It's right, a huge project, right. and this is just one small part of it. And just uh, thinking from the perspective of like this, you know, the schools having to to give up a little piece of their, but it's for something so great. So you know, afterwards I felt bad because I'm like I'm hammering over these questions. But really, it's a great. I mean, no, it was it's fine. Such a great. I appreciate it. Opportunity for all of us to be able to have this access through. Um, and connect all those all the trail systems so I mean I like your option three it's good and it helps to see the map because it you know I was concerned that it was going to go close to like the Hopkins playground clearly mm -hmm. it doesn't it's on the other okay. side of the building right right, right. and um, you know looking at the the map when we got these slides it made it much clearer mm -hmm. uh, so I appreciated that like the kids won't be distracted in their classrooms if they see bikes whizzing by or things like that they won't be able to see it so it, I think this makes it a lot and of sense if someday down the road in my dreamland, we expand the parking lot down there, that H lot. It still it doesn't interfere. It's off on the side of you know where H lot is. So I, I'm all for it. Okay. Yeah. I'm I'm personally a big fan of all the work that you all do. Every so often, uh, I get to speak with Mr. Parker. Oh yes. Um, and so fully in support, and I think you all do your work very thoughtfully. And oh, thank you. That's very clear. Thank you. We have a lot of people to answer to, so we yeah. try and <laughs> sure try do, and be yeah. thorough yeah. in the, our work. Yeah. And this is this is important work. Thank you for doing what you do. Oh, thank you. It is important, and um, we especially value the opportunity to connect the school population yeah. mm. with the rest of the town. I mean, it's huge. It is. This doesn't have. We don't have these opportunities this often in cities and towns to tie it in like this. So I think it's a it's a really golden opportunity for Hopkinton. It's exciting. I, it, I am impressed with the depth of the work that you all have done in the oh, commitment you. you have had carrying it over a number of years now. So. It is, and it, we still have a long way to go. Um, we have small pieces here and there that may not be make the total trail possible in the next few years. I, eventually, I think it will be made. Mm -hmm. However, we really feel strongly that it, when this opportunity came up for these grants, that this was really a priority of ours mm -hmm. to tie the EMC park in with the other schools to the school district, to the center trail, mm -hmm. to the downtown. If nothing else, this we feel that this would be a real legacy mm -hmm. for the town. Mm -hmm. So how will we word this motion? So I'm looking at what we had for consideration. So it looks like we are looking for a motion to approve the Upper Charles Trail Committee town of Hopkinton to construct a portion of the Upper Charles Trail on school grounds as outlined in their alternative three of the phase one of the feasibility development. I make that very motion. Second. It's a motion by Meg and a second by Mina. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. So it is unanimous. Thank you very much. And thank, thank you, you for thank your you. patience <laughs> yeah, with us. excited exactly. about this. Uh, for bearing with us. Thank you for your support. Yeah, and we'll be sure to include you as, to our progress going along. That's and great. I'm sure Tim will be right there <laughs> along with us. So. I sure will. Yep. Mm -hmm. I will look forward to when there's a ribbon cutting or something of that nature <laughs> as well. <laughs> Oh, Down wouldn't the that be nice? We yeah. haven't dared think about that. <laughs> <laughs> it's getting more real. It's all right. these it's closer. important steps. Yes, we are. We're one step closer. Right. Well, so good great. luck with all of that well, work. Thank you. Still thank you. And thank you, Tim. Thank you, Tim. Yeah. Oh, Thanks again for all the great work you guys do, too. Thank you. Oh, good night. Good night. Good night. Thanks, Tim. Good night. Good night. So that brings us into item C, which is an update on the student services director Second position. Time. All right, so you know that, um, I don't know if it was last meeting or two meetings ago, we had a, a conversation um, about the, the search that we had conducted in the district. And um, I think we had said we had about 20 applicants. We moved six forward. Uh, the initial committee interviewed all six of those candidates and put one candidate forward. And I had mentioned that um, things didn't actually work out so well with that particular candidate. So that left us in a place where um, we would either have to start a brand new search or look to uh, see if Dr. Zaleski's contract could be 
extended by a year. Um, people may have seen that there was a posting last Friday, and that happened because we were still in contract negotiations with Dr. Zaleski, trying to see if we could work something out for an additional year. Um, but the fear being that if things did not work out, we needed to have somebody in that seat on July 1st, because every school district needs to have a director of student services. So fortunately, we've been able to um, enter into some kind of an agreement with Dr. Zaleski. Uh, the school committee was able to approve that in an executive session this evening. So the you know, sort of successful appointment of Dr. Zaleski will happen if um, she is also willing to sign the contract that has been put forth to her tonight. Um, so that will mean that uh, we will take down that posting in the event that everything works out very successfully. Um, but for now, we're kind of leaving it there just to ensure that we have someone with us on July 1st. Um, so I let you talk a little bit about the parameters of the contract. So I don't actually have the, uh, okay. you know how much, do yeah, would you, okay, I, 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 I want to make fine. sure that I stay within the scope of what's legally. Sure. Uh, so uh, she has been offered a one-year contract with a review on or before January 15th, and to January 15th, 2020, and um, with uh, a successful review on January 15th, 2020, um, she would be offered a successor agreement. And this, even though we did discuss this um, in executive session, does require a public vote. It uh, does. Is that something that we are we are, need to take tonight, or is that something that needs to happen after? So, I, Karen, tonight. Should, they should do theirs now, and then Karen will sign. Yeah. Okay. okay. So, in that case, I would seek a motion to approve the contract as uh, written. I make a motion to approve the contract as written. Motion by Meg. Is there a second? I'll second. Oh, second. Mina can second. It's okay. Give it to second Mina. Second by Mina. All those in favor? Aye. Yes. Aye. And it is unanimous. Uh, and so passes, uh, and I look forward to uh, I do too. I think it will be great continuity for the district. Yeah. Thank you to you and Dr. Zaleski for working yes. through this process. Mm -hmm. It was a lot of work, but yes. Yes. we're in a good place. So it has been you. a, a lengthy you. process, and um, thank you for the perseverance of all who started from back, you know, I, and I forget what month we started in all this, but yes. Um, thank you. That brings us into item D, which is the superintendent evaluation. And as you all know, this is one of the um, legally required functions of the school committee is to evaluate the superintendent in public. Uh, we Last time, we did have a, a presentation, and we got the forms that everybody filled out and got back to me. And because you know there's so much information, I did not include everything in the draft that I have created, because there was some duplication. And what we're really after is coming for a summary statement. So it could be that as we go through this process and discuss it uh, and look at what I had already provided, we wind up at the end of the day with something different. But I wanted to put something out there as a starting point for our discussion. Uh, and then it, it, at the end of this process, um, to be able to have this be representative of how we feel this year has been with Dr. Cavanaugh and um, you know, inform us going forward. So I'm just, people have access to that in front. I did not bring printed mm -hmm. copies of that. So Nancy, are you saying we need to make that first big section more succinct? Um, not necessarily, but we could make it more succinct if we want. We can edit it as much or as little as we would like. Um, it, the intent is not just to replicate everything that we've done individually but to make something that is a, a standalone document so that there may be things that I have included that people don't agree with that think should be pulled out or things that I didn't include that should be added in, but it should be something that as a committee we feel we have worked on together here in public as we are um, required to do. So definitely more succinct is a welcome piece, but I, before we do that, I just want to go through the actual standards of what um, what we evaluate. And I apologize, because now I'm flipping through about 10 different There's screens. a lot of documents. <laughs> i got a lot of documents here. There we go. All right, so in the, 
the, the, this is the group one that I am looking at. So the step one was to assess the progress toward the goals. And I, if you look at step one, the professional practice goals, every, it, the, in cases where we did not all agree, and in many cases we did all agree, I averaged them. So in the first professional practice goals came out as met, the student learning goals came out as met, and the district improvement goals also came out as met. Step two, assess the performance standards. Um, the standard one is instructional leadership, which came out as proficient. Management and operations also came out as proficient. Standard three, family and community engagement, also proficient. And professional culture, also proficient. And just, just to note that the, the proficient is a very good um, rating for people at home that are not familiar with the, the language in this is not always as clear to somebody who doesn't do educational, and, and it was not to me as well at the beginning. So I, I actually had the opportunity to speak with Glenn Kucher from the MASC um, to get a little bit of guidance on this. And just to read what it says, it says, proficient practice is understood to be fully satisfactory. This is a rigorous expected level of performance, so it's not something to be scoffed at. Exactly. It's an accomplishment. It's an accomplishment. So the overall summative performance based on step one and two ratings uh, came out as proficient. The, rate, uh, to the rating on the impact on student learning came out as high. And then the comments we'll come back to after we've gone through um, just looking at. So in terms of goals, the professional practice goal to build, build the repertoires of administrators, faculty, and staff in cultural sensitivity and diversity with the hopes of ensuring greater social and psychological safety for students came out as met. Build my own repertoire, and by my, I mean your <laughs> own repertoire as the district's instructional leader through participation in the NISIP program, also met. Enhance reading and writing instruction at Hopkinton High School for special educators and special education students, especially as students prepare for the revised MCAS test in the spring of 2019. That also came out as met. Establish a three-year strategic plan for the Hopkinton Public Schools, also came out as met. And develop a, I, I didn't know, don't know that I mentioned this is actually district improvement that we're discussing now, not no longer um, student learning. The final one in this was to develop a budget reflective of students' learning needs as well as the expanding student population in the district, and this one came up as exceeded. So if we go down to the, the superintendent's performance rating for standard one instructional leadership, the curriculum ensures that all instructional staff design effective and rigorous standards-based units of instruction consisting of well-structured lessons with measurable outcomes, proficient. Instruction ensures that practices in all settings reflect high expectations regarding content and quality of effort and work, engage all students, and are personalized to accommodate diverse learning styles, needs, interests, and levels of readiness, also proficient. Assessment ensures that all principals and administrators facilitate practices to propel personnel to use a variety of formal and informal methods and assessments to measure student learning, growth, and understanding and make necessary adjustments to their practice when students are not learning, also proficient. Evaluation ensures effective and timely supervision and evaluation of all staff in alignment with state regulations and contract provisions, also proficient. Data-informed decision-making uses multiple sources of evidence related stu uh, to student learning, including state, district, and school assessment results and growth data to inform school and district goals and improve organizational performance, educator effectiveness, and student learning, also effectiveness. District, and then the overall rating for standard one was proficient. And we're gonna skip down over the comments because we'll come back to those. And then the next section was environment, develops and executes effective plans, procedures, routines, and operational systems to address a full range of safety, health, emotional, and social needs, proficient. Human resources management and development implements a cohesive approach to recruiting, hiring, induction, development, and career growth that promotes high quality and effective practice. Scheduling, oh sorry, that was proficient. Scheduling and management information systems uses systems to ensure optimal use of data and time for teaching, learning, and collaboration, minimizing disruptions and distractions for school level staff, proficient. Law, ethics, and policies understands and complies with state and federal laws and mandates, school committee policies, collective bargaining agreements, and ethical guidelines. Proficient. 
fiscal systems, develops a budget that supports the district's vision, mission, and goals, allocates and manages expenditures consistent with district and school level goals and available resources. Proficient. The overall rating for standard two is proficient. And skipping down over the comments again, we're going to come into the next section, which is Section 3A, engagement, actively ensures that all families are welcome members of the classroom and school community and can contribute to the effectiveness of the classroom, school district, and community. Proficient. 3B, sharing responsibility, continuously collaborates with families and community stakeholders to support student learning and development at home, school, and in the community. Proficient. Communication, engages in regular two-way, culturally proficient communication with families and community stakeholders about student learning and performance. Proficient. 3D, family concerns, addresses family and community concerns in an equitable, effective, and efficient manner. Proficient. And the overall rating for standard three is also proficient. That brings us down to our fourth area, which is the superintendent's performance rating for standard four professional culture. Commitment to high standards fosters a shared commitment to high standards of service, teaching, and learning with high expectations for achievement for all. Proficient. Cultural proficiency ensures that policies and practices enable staff members and students to interact effectively in a culturally diverse environment in which students' backgrounds, identities, strengths, and challenges are respected. Proficient. Communication demonstrates strong interpersonal written and verbal communication skills. Proficient. Continuous learning develops and nurtures a culture in which staff members are reflective about their practice and use student data, current research, best practices, and theory to continuously adapt practice and achieve improved results. Models these behaviors in his or her own practice. Proficient. Shared vision. Successfully and continuously engages all stakeholders in the creation of a shared educational vision in which every student is prepared to succeed in post-secondary education and become a responsible citizen and global contributor. Proficient. Managing conflict. Employs strategies for responding to disagreement and dissent, const constructively resolving conflict and building consensus throughout a district or school community. Proficient. And the overall rating for standard four is also proficient. So I apologize for reading through all of that because I know we have it in front of us, but it um, is something that is important for the public to be able to hear. Sure and see that um, and then I would turn our attention to the comments um, if maybe we could start at the top um, if people have areas that they would like to see edited it's very hard to edit in public I know it's loud. it is very it's sad it is it is not my practice as well but it is very sadly the law that we are required to do this out loud in, in public as a process. But I custom, I, I guess they're accustomed to hearing repetitions. So it's okay that we say several times this is her first year. Yes. Right, because are they mindful of the fact that there's five different people who wrote these comments? So is so that how, I it, mean, it doesn't need to be like a cohesive set of ideas, right? And, and on many school committees, there are more than five. Right. So and there are, yes. So, yeah, and it, so. It, but so the other piece that's important is that all of our individual evaluations are part of the public record and they are a, a piece of the evaluation itself that it it doesn't have to be we don't have to go through every single piece because we also could go through if people have that appetite we could go through all of them individually and merge that into one document as well but theoretically we could just leave it as is as each person I each person's ideas so does it it doesn't need to be reworded it it I did reword some of it to make it flow better because okay. I took I took the first person pronouns out because it was five different first people, uh, and tried to make it flow in different areas. I also most of them I took pieces of what was written out because it was very lengthy and I was trying to capture the whole. But we could add things back in, or kind of move from. There. Well, what do other school committees do? Do so they, it, they often the just make, they make a summative statement often, a summary statement of it, um, of, of how they feel. It, it is, there's not one way to do it. I just wonder if the practice is just to include everything everybody's written. I know, right? I mean, I, I, that's, I'm happy to yeah. work on a more succinct way of saying it if that's yeah. what folks want, but it, to me, I feel like, 
you get to sort of see what each of the folks here, you know, and it doesn't have our names next to it, and you might be able to figure it out, but still, I mean, it's, you know, I think it's it fine balanced. the way, yeah, exactly. Yeah. I felt like the, the consolidated result of the five inputs represented the message that I, generally that I thought yeah, yeah. we were presenting, I was presenting, so I, I think, I don't think all of the detail needs to be in here because the individual ones are accessible to Dr. Kavanaugh and anyone who wants to see them. Um, my, in general, I think that's says enough. The only area where I felt a little, um, a little bit out of step with where I think the rating came out overall, and I don't, I didn't take the time. It came out kind of late yep. today, so I didn't look at the individuals and average them or whatever. Yeah. Um, I happen to feel like Dr. Kavanaugh excels in the professional culture piece, and I felt like there were areas, like when I looked at exemplary, I thought, well, if I went to an MASC conference, could Dr. Kavanaugh lead a session on topic X? And I felt like in the areas, areas of um, particularly communication and managing conflict, personally, I felt like she was exemplary. So um, I think we've had some conflict this year. We've had an opportunity to observe um, how this has been handled. And I think, um, I don't know, I, I just felt like I wanted to recognize that. I can't imagine someone who would be a more effective communicator on that one, you know, that one too. I couldn't imagine between the HCAM videos, mm -hmm. the um, written communications, the um, strategy workshop, uh, breakouts and the reading materials and reference documents and whatnot to engage with the community. I just feel like the communication is on a level that is not is above what is expected, personally. So I just I would lobby for that. I am okay, I guess, with where the group ended up, but I would just say that I would um, I, I could see myself sitting in an MASC conference and listening to Dr. Kavanaugh speak on communication techniques and conflict right. management. So. And, and that's, this is where we are able to kind of move things one way or the other. It doesn't have to end up being an average. Yeah. That that's, would be. Yeah. Um, I, I guess for me, um, the challenge was the entire process. And um, um, the challenge of giving a holistic feedback. Right. All of us have areas of growth. And how do we provide that kind of a feedback without it impacting uh, and being received in a way uh, that helps growth, right? That, that was my challenge with the process. Mm -hmm. So overall, I think um, Dr. Kavanaugh has extremely hardworking. She's extremely professional in how she conducts herself, um, the work that she has done. I felt that um, in each of her goals, she met all the goals uh, that, that were set for her. And I felt with regard to the budget, she actually exceeded. Thank so I know. think in terms of the combined evaluation on the goals, this is spot on with what I felt mm -hmm. were her achievements. I think uh, when it came to the budget, working with uh, your team, you were able to advocate for what we need for our schools. You know, all the um, all the administrators came and presented, and you backed that up. It was not an easy process, but I felt it was extremely streamlined this year. That stood out for me, really. Mm -hmm. The entire budget process being so streamlined, and um, knowing what to expect, how it all went about, uh, working with the town partners. Um, you know, the back and forth that happened was smooth, I felt, um, and giving uh, the community an opportunity to give feedback and ultimately being able to present it at the annual town meeting in a manner that was very well received. So not only, and I think that was some feedback uh, that you had received from the committee is not just the numbers, but some pictures and some stories. I, I think you did a fabulous job there. So I think on that front, uh, this is fabulous. Um, the only area that I would uh, request for consideration is conflict resolution strategies. And I guess that's where there's a slight difference in the sense that I do think that Dr. Kavanaugh would do fabulous 
in making a presentation on anything because she's so thorough in her research and all the data analysis that she does. Uh, I think she would do a fabulous job there. I have no doubt about that. Uh, I think there are a few areas which are more interpersonal that could be looked at and perhaps some strategies to look at. Uh, that's my only feedback. That's interesting. They were sort of opposite. Yeah, that's yeah, right. You know, interesting. Yeah. We, we look at things through different lenses. Mm -hmm. and and I guess that's why it averaged out, yeah. but I definitely felt that in each of the categories overall, she was absolutely proficient. And, um, you know, I read through every description of what proficient means in each of the categories. It's actually fantastic. Mm. So I want to say you did a fabulous job, and um, I hope you, I'm sure you'll keep it up. And uh, look forward to the next year. I really love the way that Dr. Kavanaugh has made herself available to anyone who wants to come and talk to her mm -hmm. and her ability to listen attentively and to respond intelligently and sensitively is a rare virtue. Mm -hmm. um, and so I know throughout the year, I mean, I find these forms just horrific <laughs> and I find this public evaluation just horrific too because I mean, I, I know my experience here, and I know my experience in going to visit her in her office and talking to her has always been a fruitful experience. She's always listened. I think, um, you know, we're all talking to each other still. We don't have scars and cuts on our faces. We haven't broken out into fights. Uh, I heard the budget presentation was received very well by everyone in town. I mean, I already knew it inside and out in a way, but. Um, I think you've done a great job. I think you've done a great job and an impossible job. I could never do it. I would never want to do it, no matter how many lives I live. Well, don't drive her out of the Don't drive her away. No, I'm not going to drive her away. But that's why I thought, you know, we got to see, got to put proficient, because if we just line up exemplary, what does she have to shoot for? <laughs> right? In my doctoral dissertation, it's not like people said, this is perfect stellar A-plus work, Meg. No, you know, they have to set you a little bit of a goal. But I think you're right online, and I think you do have our support, and I think your administration very much has our support and our respect and our, and our admiration. I think that's true, too, so thank you. Yeah. It's all good stuff. We're moving forward. All right, I'll say something, I guess, because everybody's looking at me like there's anything else you want to say, Jen. But I mean, I mean, I, it's already all been said. I mean, I, I, and I've told you, I think that you, Dr. Kavanaugh does a great job. I think that the district was very fortunate that we were able to, um, with Kathy's retirement, have you just move right in and, and seamlessly just jump in and do your job and your old job for a little while too, right? The two of them sort of overlap for a while. So, um, you know, it is. It's been a. It's been a. Um, I'm sure a very challenging year for you, but you've done it s seemingly so effortlessly from our perspective. We know the hard work that you put in, and I think that I, same thing, to be evaluated in front of a camera with 10 people right. in the room is just such a weird, like, thick skin you must have in order to handle the situation. But Or she's heavily medicated. One, I mean, <laughs> so it's definitely... Um, you know, no, I would. There, there are so few areas that I think that you need to specifically work on. I think that as you keep continuing the job and you get more experience and you sort of learn what the everyday things are that you really need to handle and the and the things that can sort of the more the bigger sort of emergency things that you need to handle. I think that 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 comes with time, and in the first year, you've handled it extraordinarily well. So I think, you know, maybe there'll be a little less stress or something for you and a little bit more like time at home with your family or something for you as you as you move forward in, in the next couple of years. So, I mean, you did a great job. We're lucky to have you. Thank you. We are, I would echo we are lucky to have you. Uh, it, when I think back to when you assumed as the acting superintendent. It seems like so long ago in some ways, um, but you really did move in seamlessly uh, and really have taken us in a very positive direction. The schools are regarded very highly in the community. The comments after town meeting I, I, are remarkable that people were so pleased with the presentation in that you were able to negotiate with the town and work in a positive way, come out of all of the budget discussions in such a positive way and 
have them acknowledge that we needed more than the standard three and a half percent right from the get-go. That was a huge, that made our process much easier to do. I would agree, I think you're an outstanding communicator. I think that is a strength that comes across in your written communication, in the way that you communicate in front of other boards, other groups that you go before. Um, it really, it has been a phenomenal year of, I think, growth for the schools and managing a sometimes often tricky situations that people aren't even always aware of behind the scenes. That you, you wear a lot of hats and deal with a lot of delicate things um, with grace and strength. So Thank I would you. say that's it. In, in terms of the written piece, are there things that I, I, I'm sorry to keep hammering <laughs> Let's back? Let's bring it back. I, I'm sorry to bring it back. I love comments because I actually, I would think that's probably in many ways more valuable is hearing the unstructured comments that are not kind of put into a box. Um, but are there, I know that the one thing that you had said, Amanda, was moving, uh, now I've lost the, it's letter 4C, conflict, yeah. letter 4C to slide that from proficient to exemplary. Let I would support that too, if you, if you, yeah. you know, if you're willing to do that. I, I agree. I think that and your data analysis skills are also. <laughs> yeah. Fairly exemplary. Uh, it, that, that was something that was <laughs> evident from, I think, the time you became the, the assistant superintendent right. early on, that your data-driven results were well. A little wacky that way, yeah. In, in a good way. We, <laughs> we do very well with that. And that, I know, is part of what made your budget presentation so successful, was integrating data from many different places in a way that actually those of us who are not data people can understand. Jen, which one is that? The, are you, are you looking at the con, the communication one? Uh, sorry, the data one. It oh, might have been professional in professional culture, maybe. Mm, I can't, or it could have been in the communication one too. I can't remember. So are we are we? Do we have a consensus here? I also was in agreement on moving the communication one. I mean, it's sort of a it. I mean, in a way, the overall for that category is proficient. It's kind of a yeah. small point, but it is, I'm but not sure what I could possibly ask of Dr. Kavanaugh on communication that would point. make it better, honestly. I, I, so that's kind of where I was coming from. I mm -hmm. uh, but maybe we don't all agree. I'm not sure. Any others before I? Before Data I? informed decision making. It's one um, standard one E. Is that the one I was thinking? It's funny because we, all, I think almost yes. all of us commented on that in our comments. Mm -hmm. So I'm not sure if our, maybe our rankings were proficient, but our comments all highlighted that. So you're, maybe you're right. Our, but there, there felt like this pressure of like, it's kind of like I think of when the kids' report cards come back. You know, like I, I think of go back to some of the standards that like you've, when you look at what the teacher's written, it feels like your kid was a four. Not to, not comparing you to a child at all. I apologize for that. But I think you're right. In some cases, what we felt did not get captured in the rating. The rating. Yeah. So I, I would be. Um, I'd support moving one E to exemplary as well. And I, and like you said, it doesn't change the overall. But it, I think that just to show areas where you're really, I, particularly rock star, is not such a bad thing. One E. So four C and one E. Do we have, how do we do that? Do we have to take a vote? Do we just? So we're gonna vote on the end. So I think what we're looking for now is a consensus. Okay. So that people, anybody who objects, I think that would be a good time to, like, on any of these motions, and uh, not motions, but on any of these edits. things that we're, to edits that we're tossing out. I think it's important to have everybody's voice heard. Other specific edits, either to the ratings or to the comments? Well, to Mina's point, I mean, I had also put in, I don't know if you have them grow there, the sort of additional thoughts. But I, I'm okay with this being a summary and the additional thoughts being, you know, something we could talk about offline. It's, I still think this captured it, but I, I did not the leave them out intent like to, to cut because I didn't think no, no, they were I, important. I at fully all. recognize that, and and I think that my additional thoughts had baked in there some you know where do we go from here sort of growth and next steps kind of comments, and 
Um, I'm okay with this the way it stands for the review, but I, you know, I think I don't. I didn't read everybody's in detail and put it, commit, commit it to memory, but I think a number of us has some thoughts on like growth areas or next steps, or and I don't know what the norm is for that. It's going to get quite lengthy if we put all that in. I mean, my personal take is that Dr. Kavanaugh has been a very strong leader and she has been able to bring together all the work that has been going on uh, very well. And in that regard, I see her as proficient and I think that next year I'm hoping to see plenty of exemplary. Uh, I am certain that is going to happen. So from the comment perspective, um, I had certainly shared some areas which I just shared. And I think those are things you will continue to work on. And um, in your success lies the student success and our success. And that's why we are here. Um, and so the feedback, I totally want you to take it in a holistic manner and not look at it as a criticism at all in any even smallest area that we have given. These are small things which are so easy uh, for you with all that you have done. You, you put in a lot of work. You, you know, you've been working tirelessly. I've seen in every single area, you know, whether it is safety, student safety, I'd made a note of that. Um, you worked with the SRO and the police chief and the fire chief and everybody you've been working out in the community and you've been out there and you shared the strategic approach with the community communications group where folks would otherwise not have gotten that chance. So I see all of that and uh, like I said, uh, proficient is a very fabulous uh, rating to begin with and I hope to see exemplary next year. And you deal it's with us. It's cultural, too, isn't it? This whole rating system. And, you know, America is a culture of excessive praise. And if you don't excessively praise someone, it, somehow it means you damn them. But that's not the truth. You know, it, it's not. And I think what I like about the, the richness of all five reports is there are yeah. five strong points of view all together. Doesn't and hurt anyone to have those things there. It does not. done a great job. I, I mean, who even reads this? <laughs> really? Well, hopefully she does. <laughs> well, she's read it yes. once, but there you go. You know, it's like a report card you shove in the top drawer of the desk, and you don't look at it again because we're so busy with day-to-day -day actions. But I think it is telling. I mean, for the community, for the two people who might yes. be watching at home or for someone I who might do. watch on video later, I think... It is important to also remember that we are five individuals, and we don't necessarily make life easy for Dr. Kavanaugh. No. In addition to every other stakeholder in the district, Not in any way. we are constantly pushing and probing and vetting. We're a checks and balances kind of an organization, and we are fortunate to have a leader who is open to that. And I think we we have done a good job, the five of us, you know, but in some of what we've done, and I think that's helped as a team all of us come together and produce you know better output but I do think it's a reality that Dr. Kavanaugh has a hear from five of us individually and we all have priorities and we all have well reasoned um, things that are very important to us and I think um, you've shown tremendous patience and also um, openness to hearing what is important to us. We all represent different parts of the community, and I think the community likes that we are here for them, and I think that we are lucky that you listen and you discuss things with us, and we can, you know, shake out ideas, and a lot of it happens off camera, but, um, you know, it all comes together into positive output, so I think it's, we're lucky to have you. A different superintendent might not value our individual inputs quite as much. It's hard. It's hard to hear from us all the time. Yeah, all the time and in different, like you said, different things that are important to each of us. Yeah. And I think she hears from us in the moments where a particular issue might be critical. And that's the moment of learning. It's not at the end of the year when we write this little fluffy evaluation. Right. Sorry, I called it fluffy, but it is. And sometimes by issues that are critical, I think there are issues that um, we are, some of us are more passionate than others on, and uh, hot, say, button, say hot button things that get us, I'll, I'll just speak for myself, and that might not always um, be easy to deal with that much passion on different things. Yeah. 
Is there a motion um, that anybody would like to make with regard to the evaluation? Let's conclude it. It looks great. Bravo. Where well do done. we end up with the edits? Oh. The what? The edits. Where do we end up with those? So I made the, the edits. So that's the, the now I forget what letters they were. E. I changed one I e rather. Those. One E and four C. I did not hear any dissent on those, so I shifted those over uh, to from proficient to exemplary. So is there a motion to accept this as written or as amended, I guess? Well, it's written that way now because I edited it in real time. Moved. Motion by Meg. Second. Second by Mina. All those in favor? Aye. 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 And we have now concluded our first round of evaluations. Um, congratulations to all of us for getting through this process. I'm not sure so we did sorry. that textbook, but that's okay. <laughs> um, I want to thank all of you, and I want to take a minute to thank my entire team. So I want to thank Assistant Superintendent Jen Parson and the Director of Finance and Operations, Mrs. Rothermick, um, Kim Polnick, Director of HR, Ashok Ghosh, Director of Technology, Karen Zaleski, Director of Student Services, and Tim Person, uh, Director of Building and Grounds. I want to thank Dee King, the Athletic Director, our five amazing building principals, Mr. Bishop, Mr. Keller, Mrs. Carver, Mrs. Bellello, and Mrs. DeBeau, and all of the assistant principals. And I hope I have not forgotten a single soul in that list because they are all very important to this organization and very important to children. So, thank you. And at the end of the day, that, that your team is tremendous. So. Tremendous. I am very blessed to have them, yes. Thank you. Superheroes. Thank you. All right. That then moves us into our next opportunity for public comment, unless there are people behind the chairs. Um, I think we're okay with that. Um, so we will go into items by consensus. Okay. Um, so as superintendent, I recommend the school committee um, ex approve the items by consensus as outlined in your agenda. Motion. So Moved. Second. Motion by Meg, second by Mina. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Aye, and then I, it, unanimous, so passes. And then at this time, I would seek a motion to adjourn. Moved. Motion by Meg. Is there a second? Second. Second by Mina. All those in favor? Aye. 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 It, we are adjourned at 9.14 p.m. And our next meeting is on June 6, 2019, right here in the high school library at 7 p.m. Thank you all, and have a good night. Thank you.